All right, everyone. Today we're going to be finishing up our Global Cycle Locks and Keys series with number eight. And we're talking about the lock of gate two, which is known as the plan. This is the receptive, all yen. Everything yen. And every, this is one of our directions, you know, every era, every epoch has its plan. What's the plan? And uh, we can see that the directions are the witness, the leader, the example, and the plan. And so the witness is the abstract leadership of gate 13. That is the collective abstract. That is really how do we understand how we got here? How do we understand our past? This is like Stanislavski's advice for actors. They should know, they should ask themselves, who am I? What am I doing? Where did I come from? And where am I going? You know, I, I'm sure we could find which gates in the G center that is. You know, gate 13, where did I come from? Gate 7, where am I going? Gate 10 might be the who am I gate, or, you know, who knows. But in, in any case, looking at direction, we see that the direction of the witness is the direction that has to do with understanding our past. The direction of the leader has to do with preparation for the future, making logical preparations for the future and going into the future. The example, this is individual, and this is all yang, this is gate one, this is really what direction is being given as an example, what is the example of the time? Um, you know, we've had the witness um, has been, uh, let's see, the witness has been gate six, is that right? Gate six, not gate six, I think I have that wrong. The witness is going into gate 54. Um, and let me see here actually, one moment. And I'll be going, I'll be talking more about, um, you know, I have a different video on the witness, but I just wanted to check, uh, it's Virgo, 154. You know, undefined head Ajna, so the moment I think of something, it's like, yeah. Yeah, and then Capricorn. So there, no, I, that's a different one. The 54, I, I misspoke. Um, I don't know why my note says that. Just one second. Sixty one. Sixty one. Yeah, it's not gate six. I'm like, wait, it's not gate six. Why does my note have gate six? Gate sixty one. Okay, that was. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I just did this video too. I think I would have remembered if one of the uh, keys were gate six. Now, what, what would that be the key to? That would be an interesting question, right? We do have gate 59 um, as, as actually the upcoming key post-2027 for the temple. It's actually replacing gate 46. But uh, in any case, okay, so all I'm saying is we, we've been in this time period where there are four directions of life have been 61, 62, 32, and then as we'll see here, the plan, 42. So these have been the four directions that we've been given, the four internalization themes of the time. And we're being given these directions of, let's understand our past through the lens of gate 61. Let's understand our future and who can take us into the future through 62. The ability to make money and have material success through details. If you read some of the lines of gate 62, this is like being able to survive in the future through detail work. Um, the example has now shown us, you know, the fear of the time and the intelligence of the time, which is the intelligence of how to avoid failure, the fear of failure. And finally, we get to the plan. And the plan is gate 42. And I just find this so cute. Gate 42 is endings. It's endings. So that's the plan for our time. That's our plan for our time. And it's not like in 2027 that changes to beginnings. Yes, we are going to have beginnings. That's actually our logical leadership. Gate 53 uh, will be the key to logical leadership in the future. But the plan does not change from endings to beginnings. It's not like the plans we suddenly end and then suddenly there's a new beginning. After the ending, there's shock. The key to the plan changes to gate 51. The plan is to rouse the spirit through shock. Getting scared yet? <laughs> 51 is also the gate of courage. Guts, the gate of guts. So, okay, so 
42, um, hold on a second, and then 53. So it's so interesting that the gate of beginnings is going to be coming in as the key to the leadership, to the logical leadership. This is an abstract gate. I was talking about this in um, number four, I guess, number five. Uh, where we were looking at the witness theme and you know this is it's we're going from a logical key for a logical lock and a logical key to having a abstract an abstract key to the logical lock and it's just it's just interesting to see that that, that we are going to have new beginnings but new beginnings are going to be what we're looking for in a leader we're looking for leadership that can bring us new beginnings that we can trust their past track record, they have a good track record for starting things. Now, on the other hand, the plan is very different from leadership, right? This is, the plan is not what's leading us. The plan has to do with our receptivity and what we are following and what we are receptive to. And we see that it's been and will be until February 15th, 2027, in the gate of growth, the gate of endings, of maturation, part of the channel of maturation, a design of balanced development. This is the gate of maximizing the potential of beginnings through expansion. This is also the gate of bringing things to a close so that the next step can be taken. That's what we're in. We're in the time of bringing things to a close. The power to complete a cycle is the heart of the growth process. One thing at a time is its mantra. Here in this format is the core of the abstract process. Since there is no splenic center activation in this circuit, the cyclic process can be unhealthy and is always dominated by the presence of fear. Without the spleen, the recognition of the essential value of the now is missing, and yet for the stability of the abstract way, it must be accepted as essential. We exist in the now anyway. I like that you know, gate 46 is the most existential gate and it's deep in the abstract. Despite our perspectives, we exist in the now. The change of the cyclical process is not the goal. The grail is the experience. The abstract being must be absorbed in the experience of the now in order to reflect on the experience later. The potential of growth is its power to mature through completion of each cycle. So yeah, this is very near and dear to me as a personality son in gate 46. The description here, 42, increase. The expansion of the resources which maximizes the development of full potential. And right now, we're in line one. The ability when surplus resources are available to extend one's activities beyond their normal scope. So since 1960-61, there's been a lot of extension of activities because of all the surplus resources. Growth through expansion, particularly when defined to the root. This is diversification, is the, the line. The detriment, a tendency when surplus resources are available to centrifugal application. Decadence. Too much expansion can lead to decadence. <laughs> you see here, we're in a time of decadence. We are in a time of surplus resources, and they're either decadently being applied centrifugally, the centralization of power, like Thomas Piketty's book, where he shows how wealth centralizes over time, or they're allowing us to extend our activities beyond their normal scope. Going back to the beginning of um, this cross of planning and um, cross of Maya cycle that we're in, we see it began with nurturing, with line six, a natural and instinctive nurturing of others or a restrictive malefic materialism that encourages aggression, or refusal to share and benefit. So this is the 1600s, the 1610 to 1690, 1680 in there. Then we go to self-actualization up to the 1750s the end of the 1600s and the first half of the 1700s, the fulfillment and actualization of purpose is a natural path whose reward is a healthy sense of self, not power or influence. Or self-actualization is a strictly inner experience that may demand or result in a reclusive nature, inner growth that empowers reclusiveness. So the plan for the late 1600s, early 1700s was really, I mean, this fits with a lot of the philosophy of the time. It'd be interesting to look at the the philosophical writing at the time and work being done on self-actualization and fulfillment uh, in a natural path whose reward is a healthy sense of self 
and how that was kind of a burgeoning awareness collectively at that time. We get to the end of the 1700s, the second half of the 1700s to the beginning of the 1800s, the middleman, the quintessential manifestation of the mediator. So this was a time of tremendous mediation. This was the French Revolution. This was, this was, and also as a detriment, where the gift to establish and maintain relationships is ill-suited to act in mediation, where harmony must take a backseat to pragmatism, a lack of maturity where the power to harmonize distorts mediation and limits growth. So this was just, you know, I don't know how totally to unpack that, but you can see that collectively that was something that we were going through in that time, ending around the birth of Dostoevsky, the birth of Marx, the death of Napoleon, with the beginning of a time of trial and error. This was through most of the 1800s. In times of increase, mistakes are a natural part of the process. 1820 to 1890, somewhere in there. The energy and assertion to turn mistakes into advantages, the power to accept mistakes as part of growth, or a moodiness that in error may succumb to brooding and unnecessary caution. Mistakes giving power to the moodiness and the caution. So that was a time where we were figuring out, you know, these third line mistakes, trial and error, uh, industrialization and kind of the creating of the modern world. And then we get into um, the end of the 1800s up to 1960, 1961. Line two, identification, recognition and acute capitalization of trends, power for growth through participating in trends. So really that whole time period, you know, the trend of automobile, the trend of radio, of television, the, you know, all these trends that by participating and capitalizing on them, making money on them, recognizing and acutely capitalizing on the trends, the power for growth through participating in trends, the detriment and aesthetically motivated withdrawal in times of progressive change, growth which stops in reaction to trends or change. So there was that too. A lot of humanity probably stopped developing and is still kind of stuck in the 1890s to the 1950s era. And we can see that, the withdrawal because of the progressive change, the changes that were happening that stopped the growth and that stopped certain, certain cultures and certain peoples from growing at that time. And that, that brings us to the modern time of diversification, the ability when surplus resources, resources are available to extend activities beyond their normal scope or centrifugal application and decadence. Too much expansion, you know, just watch the TV show Succession to see a great example of the, the 40 to 1 detriment. So, and then we're going into 51. And this is, this is what we're going to have. This is going to be the future direction, the future plan. The gate of shock and the channel of initiation, a design of needing to be first. This is the gate of individual initiative. 51 is the only gate out of the heart center that's not part of the ego circuit. It embodies the power to compete. Walk down the street with a 51, and they're always a step ahead. It has to be first. It really does. This ego drive leads to either courage or folly, and always shocks. This is the gate of shock. The trigrams of this gate are thunder over thunder, thus the arousing quality of this energy. This is the channel of initiation, one of the three mystical channels, and the potential is the power to leap into the void. This is a channel where the heart has to be looked after both physically and spiritually. It's the gate of wounding. Yeah, wounding is a shock. You know, it's interesting. If you fall or something and you take homeopathy for it, they don't treat the injury, they treat the shock. Or it raises the question if maybe the shock really is the injury. The warrior and the fool can do great damage. The heart is not an awareness center, yet without this competitive drive, there is no centering in our evolutionary process. Like the 14th gate, which empowers our direction, the arousing empowers a direction of love. The love of life itself and its constant challenge to our survival. The description of the arousing. The ability to respond to disorder and shock through recognition and adaptation. So this is the plan. The plan is we're going to develop the ability to respond to all the disorder and shock in the world through recognition and adaptation. And to do this requires separation. This is the first step. Line six, separation. In times of crisis, when all those around are confused and in disorder, the ability not to succumb to the panic, but to have the will and vitality to survive it alone. Separation. The power of the ego to meet challenges alone. Or on the detriment, the same gift, but one by its attitude that invites disapproval 
and in the extreme may even prevent a successful separation. The egoism to meet the challenge alone that may provoke and empower the challengers. So what this is saying is that part of the, the direction, you know, one of the four directions we're being given in this future era, not the direction of the abstract or the logical leadership or being the example with the fear and the intelligence, but this is the one that's about the receptivity, what we're here to be receptive to, what we're here to kind of go in the direction of, and to follow the river. And where is the river taking us? The river is taking us through this whole time of endings and this time of the door closing, the Gate 52 theme, the theme of the decadence at the end. The decadence when the overexpansion has happened and the centrifugal application of, of the, the surplus and we're essentially leaving behind this time of closing and ending and decadence and entering into a time of shock where we're being called to separate, to separate from forces that are in chaos and disorder. And, you know, this is the necessary separation from those forces. And that is the direction we're all being given by gate eight. The plan, which can only be accessed now through gate 51. I mean, this is the key that gives us access to that. This is what the plan is, is now. And to have access to that plan, we're kind of being tasked with separating from the disorder and the chaos and from those that are just freaking out in the disorder and the chaos so that we can center. Remember, this is part of the centering circuit. And we can center in ourselves as ourselves, not provoking others you can provoke them so much that they hold on to you and don't let you go. You can provoke them so that they get in the way of the separation. This is about separating in a way that doesn't unnecessarily provoke. I mean, the 51 will always be pr provocative, like the 39. And, you know, it'll always shock people. But this is about what is that healthy separation of standing alone as yourself. It's almost like a right variable theme. Standing as yourself in the world alone separated from the forces that are preventing you from doing what you need to do in order to survive and centering yourself. Thanks for watching.